The following is a comfortably zoned radio network production. Thank you, Tally Olson. I am back. You are comfortably zoned with me, the Zigzag Man, in Alameda, California, right across the bay from San Francisco, across the moat from Oakland, in the great state of California. And uh, as usual, I have uh, an interesting guest. That's what I do. That's what I promise the most interesting people on the planet uh, cross these airwaves repeatedly. And in this case, no exception, back for second or third time, I think it's the third time, Ray Crepatus. Hello. Ralph, I Hello. wish that could be as exciting as San Francisco. I'm in New Jersey, but I, I appreciate the introduction. Well, um, you know, funny, in San Francisco, across the bay from where I am, they are introducing robot cops to, uh, for whatever reason, and it's all over CNN. They've been working on these robots that can um, go in in certain situations and uh, shoot the place up. I don't know um, if we're better off with real cops or what, but uh, it's the age we live in, and um, I'm not that crazy about the age we live in. Um which um, I, I think it's contributed, contributory to what I call the unholy trinity that script us. And that is the combination of organized religion, capitalism, and government. And mm. they, all, they all blend together in... Uh, Destroying all lifestyle. That's the, be the best way to put it. And um, I, I ask you, Ray, to give me some examples off the top of your head what you consider to be um, evident of uh, wrongdoing in any part of the unholy trinity that you want to talk about. Well, the first thing you mentioned is, you know, the church. So I guess, you know, that's that's pretty that's pretty big. You know, we never knew the extent of it until, you know, recently. I had a few cousins that uh, in the 80s, you know, were um, attacked by a priest and they they settled for 60,000. I would have settled for 60 million. So right. that kind of tipped me off then. Um, Ireland, you know, tipped me off again. My son was born there. I found out all the stuff they were doing there. Not that the people were brainwashed, but everyone, you know, respected highly the uh, Catholic Church back then. So that gave the priests, I guess, carte blanche to do what they did. And, uh, you know, that's the ultimate, you know, uh, betrayal, you know, using God to... Uh, yeah, well, let, let's separate the hierarchy of the church from anything to do with spirituality, and um, for, for the sake of uh, conversation, I'm not trying to get after Catholics or Jews or anybody else that worships. I just want to say that the one thing that's wrong with the church, besides uh, in the, with the Catholics, it's pedophilia um, and, and this, that, it's that they're tax-free, and whatever they do, they don't pay taxes, which means that the, the taxes that need being paid, the, the services that need to be gotten, are paid for by the folks that do pay taxes. And that's the one thing I... Uh, I was hopeful 10 years ago, Nome, Alaska filed, uh, started billing 
local businesses, churches, and they are a business, they, they uh, taxed them. And the church went to court and uh, didn't hold up. Didn't hold up. There was uh, no way to tax them. That's um, not going to change. And when you speak of the church, the most damning effect that the, the Catholic Church has had on we Americans is they tried to eliminate through the Supreme Court, which uh, which they now own, <laughs> um, Roe v. Wade. And I think that's a slap in the face on society. So, um, yeah, yep. that, okay. that, that's my rant about the church. Um, yeah. how did, how would you, was your, rel, were your relatives that settled for X amount of money, 60,000 or whatever, how would they affected? And did they get, um, nearly enough money to make up for a lifetime worth of bad memories. Oh uh, no, no, it was it was two brothers. Um, um, I'll tell you how bad it was, Ralph. One of them, uh, you know, the father trusted the church, and the priest would come over in the bedroom and pray with the kid. I, remember I was a kid too. I was a little older, you know, in my twenties, and I, I knew it was odd. You know, I said, "Wow," I go, "That that just doesn't look right," you know. Uh, but the guy, right. the father trusted, um, you know, you know, the abuse went on, apparently. Um, the parents um, don't speak to one of the kids anymore. I mean, they're totally estranged. The guy, the guy broke away from them because he had a baby and then the parents were accusing that child. Because when you get abused, apparently, you know, you abuse people. I guess that was their theory. So they actually thought their own son was abusing their daughter because he was abused and they, they, you know, accused him of that. So he just thought he, he, he had it. I mean, he just stopped communicating with the parents. And uh, so that's how bad that was. He lost a full, a full family, you know, because of it. and the other brother, um, you know, major psychological issues, never married, you know, everything you can imagine that you could be affected by nice guy, but you know, both brothers mm -hmm. just on my personal you know, experience, um, you know, uh, devastating, you know, uh, how did it know, affect totally their sad. spiritual, um, way? How did it affect their spirituality? Were they able to separate the, the church from, from their belief system, from, uh, for what they um, was obviously near and dear to them, or did that get uh, kiboshed as well as their um, as their uh, feelings and, uh, and I don't know. How, do you know how if they're still praying? I hope so, because well, uh, um, yeah. They, um, well, I know they don't go to church anymore. I mean, they definitely don't do that. Um, as, far, as far as their spiritualness, I'm not sure, but I, I know they stopped fully going to church. And ironically, the dad, who was like really totally into the church, did everything in 100% trust until that happened. Then, of course, he went to the, you know, they went to the court. It was a courtroom situation, you know, with the priest. Um, and he went every day, and now he doesn't go to church anymore you know, to the to Catholic church. So, you know, I know that for a fact, as far as the spiritualness, I, I don't know if they have a guy, you know, if they have a higher purpose in their minds or what. So that I don't know, but I know they don't go to church anymore, you know? So, you know, I mean, can't blame them for okay. that. Well, I hope, but, I hope they weren't damaged spiritually. Yeah, um, yeah they're, they're good guys deep down, real, real good guys. So I'm, I'm thinking spiritually, I think they might have survived it, you know, because they're not, you know, they, I know they could go the other way, you know, like doing bad stuff, you know, but they actually mm -hmm. turn out to be good, good men and the caring guys. So I, I'm looking positively on the spiritualness of it, you know. What really. did the priest say in the courtroom setting? 
I wasn't there, Ralph. Um, the father was in there, you know. All I remember mm-hmm. is I was shocked how low the money was because even back then when I was 20, 20 years old, I knew that, man, this is big. I mean, if you're going to settle, you might as well settle in the millions because, you know, I mean, 60000 is going to be gone in a year. And, uh, you know, so I, I, all I remember from that whole scene was how low the money was, you know. But back then they were blue-collar people and 60000 was a lot of money. So I'm sure the church knew yeah. that and threw it at them. I think they had a thing where they had to sign where they they couldn't talk about it, you know. So, you know, I know they wrap it all up in the courtroom, so they try to protect, the, you know, the priests and everybody, you know, as far as right. the gag order thing. And you know? the sad part is all over the country, in many countries, accused and convicted and or convicted clerics are being transferred from one diocese to another. And that's without telling the people in the new diocese, without um, any regard for humanity. And um, I I think that's horrible. And that's uh, one part of um, the unholy trinity. Next, business. Give me an example Mm -hmm. of what goes on in business that is uh, so um, disgusting to you that you got to share. Well, I mean, when you hear when you hear you know professions that are lowly rated, you know, you hear the car business, you hear the lawyers. I mean, lawyers to me hurt me the most because you know whenever you need a lawyer, I mean, you need them. The court system's set up that you know you can't you can't survive you know without a lawyer when there's a when there's a situation that arises. So they're in full blown mode to, you know, to take advantage. You know, if they got the power, they got the knowledge, um, you know, they like money, you know, and I'm not saying all are bad. I mean, there's always, there's always real good ones, you know, but uh, there's a ton of ones that are unethical. I personally got burnt on fees um, on, on, on one guy building 70 hours research on a situation so, you know, and then you can't really go to arbitration because that takes years. The, the um, lawyers know it. They know where the line is, a lot of them. And then they, then they just settle, you know. So that's what I, I had to do. Um, my advice is, is, you know, I paid the retainer up front, too, which was a big mistake. You know, the guy wanted the whole thing up front. And then they got full power, you know. So, you know, from now on, if I ever have to use a lawyer, hopefully I don't. I mean, if you could. You're better off, Ralph, even using a public defender than a defense lawyer sometimes on a criminal uh, trial. I had friends that went that route, and the lawyers basically just take their money. They become part of your estate, and they just milk you as much as you could because you're going to settle on a plea bargain anyway because 98% of people do because you go to trial. You know, you lose. You you go away for a real long time. Right. Yeah, and you know it's all stacked against you, and then you got to pay a hundred, two hundred, three hundred thousand for a trial. So I mean, it's all, and those are lawyers too. You know, the prosecutors and stuff. You know, I mean, I, I know again, there's there's good ones, but then there's a lot of them that are just you know get re- you know they get promoted and so forth by the convictions. So now you got that against you, you know, as far as um as as the money you know the money aspect of it. So you're getting it from mo- mostly all ends. And my friend that had a, a case, he had to plea out. Uh, he, he told me, he goes, if you ever have this, this come up, just get a, you know, just get a defense lawyer. You know, I mean, that's, he would have did much a, better. A public yeah. defender. I mean, with a public defender, public defender. Yeah. 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 And then at least you don't go through your hundreds of thousands and wind up broke. And you're going to, you're going to plea anyway, you know, if you get, well, you know, if you get caught up in something. Yeah. Ray, if if you have those hundreds of thousands, are you going to be offered a um, public defender? Well, that's the other thing. Yeah. I mean, if you have the money, then, you know, you, you won't get a public defender. I mean, some guys, um, I know they don't have much assets in their names, you know, probably for those reasons, you know. So, yeah, mm-hmm. if you have the money, there's no way you're going to get a public defender. So, you know, um, that's very true. You know, I, I think the point he was making, Ralph, that public defenders are even better than high-priced lawyers. It doesn't matter how high-priced the lawyer is. You know, 
You know, right. I mean, that girl, that girl from, um, is, is a girl, the lady from Thernos, whatever, has gone away for 11 years. You know, I'm sure her lawyer probably took her for a couple million dollars, you know. Um, you know, so it's one of those things. Then you got the whole, you know, you got the whole system once you go in and you got the corrections, all the, all the crazy stuff that goes on in there. You know, the U.S. population, 2 million people are in jail more than any other country in the world. Then that's a whole money money making thing you know a lot of it is you know private um corrections you know institutions are in for profit you know the the whole thing the whole trinity you know so that's all part of the business part of it you know to use people uh put them away for a long time and then there's money made there's money on food you know the, the, the whole thing you know it just becomes a whole money maker so in the politicians okay. you get all that um, aspect of it so that's part. That's another part. Let me just put in a disclaimer for for attorneys. They're not all like that. Even if it's eighty percent. No, no, no. no. I, I'm talking about the, the, the unethical ones. There are. Right. There's no doubt no. about it. There are good attorneys, but I'm just telling people what right. to kind of watch out for. Yeah. I just wanted to get that straight. And um, absolutely, absolutely. I've been, I've been served by a, a wonderful attorney here in Alameda. His name is Andrew Doza over the years, and he is the antithesis of all of that. So um, um, whatever we're talking about is more or less in broad terms. And um, and, I'm, and I'm sure there are, are wonderful clerics that um, in the Catholic Church that uh, uh, far be it for, for them to be pedophiles, for instance. Only this, though. Everybody knows. It's If you're a priest, you know what goes on with other priests. And there's a big cover-up there. So um, as, uh, as much as you like to say, um, give credit, for their goodness, you you must question the fact that it's um, it's a club, just like the judicial system is a club. If you they had a Christmas party, it would be the prosecutors, the court clerks, and the judges attending the Christmas party for a, or a Hanukkah party or whatever. You know, they are basically in cahoots with each other. It's a system. And on a smaller scale, try getting a traffic ticket and fighting it. Because the cop that comes to, comes to t- tell the judge, he'd be at that Christmas party. So we're getting screwed by the judicial judicial system every bit as much as um, you can imagine. And um, I I like to think that there would be some solution, but that brings us to the, the body of work that gives credence to this. And that's the government. The government doesn't tax the churches. And the government is um, an ally of of the prosecutors. So um, that's where I come up with the unholy, unholy trinity. Um, Ray, add something to it. As far as in general, or just the, the government side of it, or, or everything? The government, the government side. Well, the government is, um, you know, you know, I'm not saying is bought and paid for by the lobbyists, but you get that whole aspect of uh, of it, you know, where where the industries lobby for certain things, and then they get it, you know, they get their brace because they got the money. You, you got the revolving door aspect of the guy from Goldman Sachs that goes into the government to be the treasury secretary. And then he does favorable things 
you know, that will get him promoted after he leaves government back to the private side. You know, so you got the back and forth revolving door. You know, you get stuff like I'm not saying that Jared Kushner, you know, doesn't deserve two billion dollars, you know, from Saudi Arabia. But, you know, I mean, he was in government before, you know, so there's there's a lot of um, intermingling with, with private public going back to public, going back to private. <laughs> You know, and the, I call it the revolving door. I think that's the word for it. You know, so you get all, all that going. You know, you get people that don't want to fine or put in jail Goldman Sachs guys or, you know, during that 2008 crash, none of those guys went to jail, you know, but to put the low fly, uh, low hanging fruit guys in jail because you got to put some people in jail. But the guy from Countrywide goes scot-free. He made about $500 million. You know, but you'll get Goldman Sachs fined $500 million. You know, you, you hear him get fined a lot of money, but that's after they made $3 million. Because mm-hmm. they don't want to go after those guys. They, I think they're too powerful, you know. And then uh, and then that makes the whole thing collapse if they start going really after the big, big shots, you know. So, you know, it's, it's I don't think it's and ever going to really change. True. The really yeah. big shots come from either government or they supply government. The next senator is going to be a CEO someplace. So unless unless he's playing football for Georgia, which um, <laughs> it tells you an awful lot about the, the system that uh, Herschel Walker could be nominated. And, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. And then you get two. You get you get two. Ralph um, the. Um, you know, the congressmen and so forth could trade on insider information, you know, and they don't get in trouble because they're making laws on the industry. I mean, there was a scene a couple of years ago where a whole bunch of them made a lot of money and they had the obvious insider information, but they don't get in trouble for it. But you get a Martha Stewart that gets a tip from someone who sells your stock and then they get her for lying about it and she goes to jail for two years. You know, so right. it's just, you know. And well, we haven't even talked about the lobbyists, the gun control lobbyists that make these congressional members, senators, rich, in, pays all their campaign fees and gets them reelected. Um, that and health care. We're really being screwed by the government that allows lobbyists to control Healthcare, drugs, this, that, and the other thing. Um, can I have some potential solutions from you? Is there anything to all of this that can, can we look for for the the light at the end of the tunnel to make society better? Well, I mean, I always like to have hope. You know, you hate to have no hope. So as long as we're alive, there's the hope. And I think it might be just Ralph just talking about it and just incrementally making people aware of it. You know, and I don't have the one, this is what the solution is answer. You know, I, I, I wish I had the one answer. But I think it's just openness to talk about it all, you know. And then, um, you know, you're not going to get rid of all of it. You know, but maybe, maybe, you know, 1% here, 1% there, and you crack down and just make it that a little bit better because 1% better might might be a lot, you know. So Absolutely. I think it could definitely improve by, by us talking about it. It's just like a mental health issue. You have to talk about your mental health, and then if you, if you keep it in, it's not good, you know. So I look at it like that. We do have freedom of speech, you know. I mean, there are, there are all the good things we got, you know. So I think that's – important you know to realize that I mean, i'm 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 shocked how great society seems to run i mean if i didn't know any of this i go out take my walk it's pretty safe it's i buy things i have you know i watch my sports i mean it runs fairly good you know until you get you know uh entrapped in one of these things like uh like we were talking before you know if you have a kid that was with the priest or you get the you know, you get a bad deal with um, an unscrupulous lawyer, you know, that's when the trouble starts, you know, but if you mind your own business. I mean, life, life isn't too bad, but, you know, but through the mishmash of it all, you know, it's, it, it's out there, you know. Well, let me remind about the thing that we talked about healthcare. 
that 50% of, maybe 80% of bankruptcies are the cause of the result of um, of um, healthcare and being billed and going bankrupt because, and people with insurance um, go bankrupt. How do you say, how can that happen? Well, insurance companies are very selective about what they pay and what they don't pay. And um, so uh, when we talk about big business, um, start with start with the insurance companies. Um, you know, I feel better that we identified some of this stuff. You're right. right. Talking about right. it is good. Is good. And if one person listens and takes something from this podcast, it'll be successful. Just be careful out there. You know, that's all. I mean, there's a whole bunch of other industries, maybe another show. We were talking you know, the other day online about the car industry and, you know, and all the basic industries that try to kind of nickel and dime you sort of, you know. So, you know, it's, you just got to be careful and just read up on things. That's a good thing about the Internet. You definitely could get educated, you know, before you, I guess, call it get burnt. You know, there's enough information out there to really help you, you know. So I would I would use the Internet as much as I can. You know, yeah, uh, people out there, you really don't have to attend Trump University to to get an education. No, <laughs> which, is, <laughs> which uh, to me is the biggest laughing stock in the, in the whole world. This guy gets elected, but you know what? I think we've we're, we're past that. We're past Trump being a significant force in the Republican Party. They may not know it yet, but if, you, if you're if playing scoreboard, nobody that he's endorsed lately has gotten elected. In, um, and I just hope Herschel Walker isn't the exception because we've got the Senate, but that one seat, and when I say we, I'm an independent. I can't call myself a Democrat but, um, for a number of reasons, um, although I vote as a Democrat, so I'm an independent in my mind. I uh, register as a Democrat so that I could vote in the primaries. And um, this has been a great show. I uh, It's cathartic talking about it, getting a kindred spirit into my belief system. Um, Ray, it's a pleasure. Hey, Ralph. Anytime. Let's do it again. I appreciate the time you're giving me to voice my opinions. You know, I always have fun with you. Thank you. I do, too. And uh, next time we'll keep it light. We'll do a little sports, baseball in particular. How are you spending the off season in your head? Do you play uh, simulation games, or um, do you listen to uh, YouTube? They have old radio broadcasts, uh, which I do. Of uh, I get to listen to Red Barber and Phil Rizzuto and Mel Allen do Yankee baseball when I was a kid before the Mets. Um, and hearing that on YouTube is... Uh, it's just wonderful. What are you doing in the off season uh, to stop your jonesing baseball? I do some of that. I do some of that, Ralph. You know, I, I, I go on YouTube. I watch some things. You know, as you know, I post a lot of baseball stuff. You know, I, right. I like reading stories. I got, I got, you know, Baseball Digest comes out, you know, once a month. Uh, so I look at that. Just stories and stuff. I I basically uh, you know then I get into football and then once then I look forward to spring training. You know, so getting into football actually helps my baseball because I know once that's over, I got baseball. You know, so every week that goes by in football, I'm getting closer to spring training. You know, so it kind of psychologically gets get through it that way. You know, and uh, you know I mean months go by fast. You know, before we know it, it's going to be February. 
and there's nothing better to me than that spring train. Everybody has hope, you know, when you get in there. I, so, I read yeah. something, 78 days to spring training or opening day or uh, I guess it's spring training. Um, any predictions in the signings? Will Judge sign with the Yankees and will DeGrom sign with the Mets? I'll give my opinion is no. I don't think I don't think uh I think Judge will go somewhere else and same same with the Grom. I don't think uh I don't think they're gonna stay with the with the home team, you know, in my opinion. I mean we'll see, okay. but that's my feel, you know. It's my feeling. Well, uh, feel that's all I want is your that's I all I want is your opinion. Um thank you, Ray. Good podcast. I enjoy right, your man. company. You're welcome. All right. All right. Be, be well, and uh, thank you for listening, everybody. Comfortably Zone Radio Network. I'm Ralph Big Tycho, the weak link of it all. And I just want to say adios and happy trails. The proceeding has been a Comfortably Zoned Network production. You are advised to keep your dreams wet, your humor dry, your children and grandchildren out of military recruiting offices and off the laps of clerics who wear dresses. Thank you for listening, everyone. Happy trails.